is with dependent children in the 1990s. Nationwide caseloads dropped by almost as much. So what's this about? Well, it also reduces fraud. The need-to-work requirement for food stamps also reduces fraud. Why? Because the most common type of fraud in welfare involves off-the-books employment. In food stamps, as in other welfare programs, benefits go down as earnings rise. So you have to look into this. And what uh, Mr. Rector is calling for is that the federal government should establish work requirements similar to Maine's for the 4.7 million able-bodied adults without dependents currently receiving food stamps nationwide. That's what they should do. And I'm sure that when Donald Trump or one of the other Republicans is president, they're going to be running for the hills, knowing that they're, 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 the gravy train is over. Now let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation. WABC Pete, I asked why are, why are drugs rampant in New Hampshire? Pete thinks he has the answer. Pete, what's the reason? Well, there's a few reasons. The f first is that that, well, there's nothing to do up there. I mean, I lived up there for five and a half years. First, if you don't golf or ski, and I don't do either, there is nothing to do. It is winter and cold and dark, like nine months out of the year. There's no way. Isn't New, isn't New Hampshire a tax-free state? Yeah, New Hampshire is a tax-free state. Yeah. No, I understand. That was one of the reasons people went there was for tax tax avoidance purposes. Okay, but that's one of the reasons. But it's also a depressed state, isn't it? Economically depressed. Absolutely. I mean, there there are part, Yeah, you've got uh, Nashua and Manchester, and then you have a huge section of the state before you get to Hanover, Lebanon, where there is nothing. I mean, their whole economy revolves around tourism, golf, skiing, that sort of thing. Their whole they, their whole revenue comes from the tourists, basically, and. You know, if you don't ski, if you don't golf, there's really not much to do. There's not much choice. There's not much nightlife. There's not much social to do. Like I said, it's dark and it's cold also. Oh, no, I'm listening to you and I hear all of that. So how is it that their grandparents didn't have to use heroin in the dark nights? How'd the grandparents get through the mean dark nights of New Hampshire? How'd they do it? Well, maybe they got their bottle of hooch next to them or something. I mean, I don't know. They had a bottle of hooch, but there wasn't a drug epidemic in New Hampshire. So they drank a little bit, big deal. But they didn't go out there holding people up or, or peddling off their daughter for a heroin fix. Well, times have changed, man. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, heroin is, uh, you know, plus it's coming up from New Hampshire. Maybe it's coming down from Canada. I mean, they're stuck right geographically. They got a lot of problems there, too, as far as drugs coming in. From all angles. It's not like you're in the middle of Iowa. Surrendered. Well, we've actually studied it, and it's said that the Dominican drug dealers dominate the heroin trade in New Hampshire. That's a given fact. It's also known that dr the drugs are coming up from Mexico because of Obama's open borders policy. I mean, let's not be naive about it. This has been studied and studied and studied. This is not coming out of the atmosphere. It, they're not getting hooked on by spontaneous combustion. The drugs are coming from somewhere, and it's because the Fed got, the feds are looking the other way at the border. In fact, they've told the Border Patrol to look the other way. What more do you need to know? I'll tell you one thing. When I lived up there, they did have Border Patrol up there, and uh, you, there was a checkpoint on Route 91 there that you had to drive through almost every day. I had to on my way to and from work. I mean, that was, you know, 10 years ago. But, um, you know, maybe it's lax since Obama became in office, but... I just think because there's not much to do socially, there's not a lot of nightlife, there's not much going on. It's dark. It's cold. You're inside nine months out of the year. These kids don't have anything to do. That's just my opinion. All right. I, I don't accept that that is the reason for it. I accept that that's an explanation for it. Uh, it's a little different <laughs> calling an explanation in part rather than a reason. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of reasons and explanations surrounding the drug addiction problem in New Hampshire. You certainly touched on one of them. I accept that. And I thank you for holding so long uh, to express your viewpoint on the Savage Nation. Here's a little uh, note on real estate if you want to know it before I take a break. S this came out just now from a market research company. And a, anyone who lives out here knows it's true. San Francisco real estate looking like it did before the dot-com crash in 2000. It's a very interesting article, and we know that prices have gone through the roof. I've lived here since 1974, so it's nothing new to me. But experts in the area are saying that the Bay Area's rapid property value and rental cost appreciation today is looking more like a repeat of the dot-com bust of 2000. I'll have more when I return right here on The Savage Nation.
Fenwick in a coffee shop. Where we go now? Marching around the ice cream man in the coffee shops. How do these people think this matters in their life? They sit in a coffee shop. No one ever pays attention to them. In comes Rubio, the schmendrick, the ice cream man ringing his bell. And suddenly they take selfies with him, this and that. Now they have a Republican strategist who I never heard of. Republican strategist Mercedes Schlapp. Another genius. All our, all our eyes are on second place. Yeah, that, that's my worry now. We know Trump is going to win. But now they're ready to, to push you to, to listen to Fox News till the end of the night until she comes on with the hair. Uh, you're supposed to look at who's in second now. We all know Trump won. So, but in order to keep you watching, they're telling you the race is on second place. It's a crowded one. Who's going to win? He's up. He's Christie is down. All I can tell you is this. Poor Ben Carson. Everyone loves him. If he were a snow tire, the truck would have slid off the road. The same with Fiorina. If she was a truck tire, the truck would have turned over in the snow. What are they running for? Just to be seen again for another two minutes? Another coffee shop visit? Oh, look who's here. Look who came in. Oh, look at that. Here's Ben Carson. Oh, everyone get... They, they probably wake up in the morning now in New Hampshire and put on clean clothing expecting Carly Fiorina to show up in, in Buzz's coffee shop in the morning with the bacon, <laughs> and bacon and eggs. If they're really lucky, Ben Carson may, may do a cameo. <laughs> God. Polls close in an hour and 25, 35 minutes. A large break of unaffiliated voters for one candidate could lead to a primary night surprise. Yeah, really. That's Fox News pushing it so you stay up long enough to watch uh, hairdo there. On the Democratic side, meanwhile, Vermont Senator Burn, um, Burnham Up Sanders looking to answer Hillary Clinton's now going with a winner. What are you looking to win? It's a 99% chance of him winning. What are they making believe there's even a race over there? She is finished in New Hampshire. She shouldn't have even showed up. She should have stayed in Arkansas. I mean, wherever she's from. Is it Indonesia? Where is she from Indonesia or Kenya? I don't know where she's <laughs> Hillary Clinton is as much from New York as Barry Obama is from from wherever he is. Battle for second place, the race to watch a New Hampshire GOP primary. Oh, there they go. How long? You know, when you vote, it's such a pathetic thing. They sit there, and I go in with ID. I want them to ask for my ID. I pointedly take out my driver's license when I vote in California. And the old, shaky, gray-haired woman goes, oh, no, we can't accept that. I said, what do you mean you can't accept that? What do you mean you can't accept that? Well, you know why they can't accept it. How else could you throw the race for another Democrat communist like Obama if it wasn't for the illegal aliens? Kasich, most polls close at 7 p.m. Eastern. A few at 8, blah, blah, blah. I like Kasich. I'm glad he's moving up. He At least he runs a state. I know he's not a real conservative. No one's a real conservative. I get it. There's only one real conservative in the world, only one in the entire world. One, only one person who's pure enough to be the president. No one knows who it is. No one knows where he resides. No one knows what he looks like. But everyone knows what a true conservative should be like. That's all. Just study the textbooks. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson should be president again. Trump favored to... to I bet you by today's standards in talk radio, George Washington would be considered a communist. <laughs> If you if you were to listen to some of the rubbish that's passed off as what is a conservative, it makes me laugh. If they held up Thomas Jefferson, they would say he's worse than Bernie Sanders. If they dug up George Washington, they would say he doesn't meet the litmus test to be a true conservative. Because although he knows what the Constitution is, he doesn't swear on it every second. In fact, he was seen in a dental office getting wooden teeth, and he didn't have a copy of the Constitution on his right hand swearing on the Constitution. Moreover, he's not a Reagan Democrat. He's not a Reagan Republican. So therefore, George Washington is disqualified from being considered a conservative. <laughs> is it any wonder that most of us laugh at it all? You have to laugh at a certain point. Otherwise, you can lose your mind if you take all of this too seriously. At a certain point, you have to say enough is enough. And I would say enough is quite enough. It's been quite enough for a long time right now. To me, the big issue was the drug addiction problem in New Hampshire and why none of the politicians talked about it until I did. Yes, that's right. None of them talked about the drug addiction scourge in America during this campaign till I started screaming from a rooftop. And you can mark my words. I can prove it. I can prove it because I had a great former DEA agent, Michael Levine, on this show. It must have been, what, five weeks ago, four weeks ago now? I don't even know. Time is flying. And we talked about drug addiction. And he knows more about it than anyone I know. All of a sudden, now, drug addiction is an issue in New Hampshire. They're all throwing a bone to it. Oh, yeah, 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 serious problem. 
And when I'm president, ring-a-ling-a-ding, I'll make sure I do nothing. Next one. Uh, and John Kasich, what would you do if you become president of drug? Well, I can tell you that in Ohio, when we had a drug addiction problem, I did nothing there. And I can assure you that if I become the nominee here in this wonderful granite state, I'll do nothing here. But I can assure you I will do it with all the dignity that you've come to expect from my campaign. And on and on and on. The only one who gives you an answer, what it'll do with two people. Trump and Cruz are the only ones who an answer a question and actually give you an answer to anything that they would do. Both of them would be qualified. And better qualified, by the way, than any of the communists that they might bring up. Okay? Phone number 855-47282 as we swing into the last half hour of the third and final hour of the Savage Nation. I'll give you the latest poll results, even though the polls are still open. And even though there are no exit polls, I'll give them to you. Because you want to hear them right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. All right, so you heard this song, right? And you're telling me the music of the 60s had nothing to do with the drug addiction of today? Go ahead, play it. Mellow Yellow is an LSD, a, a, a brand. 50 years of this pollution. Yellow 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 or the other songs, or the movies put out by Weinstein and company. Every movie, a gun or a heroin needle. Every movie, either a cigarette in the mouth or a drug or a gun, and they're anti-tobacco, anti-gun, and, and anti-drug. That's all. Now we have from the granite state to the ground-up state in one generation. There's nothing left there. Used to be rock-ribbed, an image like a, a guy with a pitchfork with the wife standing in a, a fertile cornfield. Well, they don't grow corn up there. They never grew corn in, in New Hampshire. What did they? What was the product? They marble, marble. They had marble quarries in New Hampshire, right? That was the main. That's all anyone ever did. There was grow like uh, pick marble out of a quarry. Robert, look up quickly for me what the the economy is of of New Hampshire, other than drug treatment, other than uh, the recovery industry. Is there another industry now in, in New Hampshire? They still produce marble, or it's all coming from uh, from from quarries in the, in in Turkey. KSFO Online, Stephanie, one of my online internet listeners making this show the number one streaming show in America by a two-to-one margin. What's on your mind, Stephanie? Well, I'm listening to this guy, you know, a guy talking about New Hampshire and about um, how people are bored and that's why they're doing drugs. And you know what? There is a huge wide world out there. there people are bored. You know, if, you're, if you don't have Internet, if you don't have a phone in your hand, um, they're bored. Get a hobby. I, I feel that so many people don't have a hobby. Wait a minute, but wait, wait a minute, there's a word missing, they, a hobby? Don't they have to work first to have a hobby later? Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, but, you know, you... How did, the, how did the grandparents in New Hampshire get through a day without the Internet and without a phone in their hand, looking every minute, walking into an oncoming car? How did they get through a day? They probably didn't even have color television. How did they get through it with the boredom and the cold nights? Well, for one, they were very religious people. That's gone with the wind. That's if religion is even allowed over the border of New Hampshire. Are there any churches left, or, or they're all uh, uh, AA centers now? In Marin County, California, if you drive by a church, the only time they're full is on Monday and Tuesday nights when uh, addicts who are caught in a, in a hit-and-run accident or arrested for DUI, they, they're caught ordered to go to a treatment on Monday or Tuesday night in one of the churches. Otherwise, no one's there. I don't have an answer for how to fill your life if, if your life is empty. But I do know drugs certainly fill the void, but look at the, the result of that. Most polls close at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's, let's see, an hour and 25 minutes. Like we don't know the results already. Obama sends Congress a record $4.1 trillion spending plan. You hear this? 4.1, I don't even know what a trillion is anymore. U.S. made tank appears in Iranian backed militias video. Phony engineers, buildings face destruction after alleged scam unravels. I don't even understand that one. Man accused of faking cancer, taking $22,000 of donations. <laughs> uh, Muslim U.S. Olympian only getting attention because of her faith. No kidding. They were tripping over themselves. Okay, New Hampshire primary result. 